Hi, I'm Mike Plotnikoff, and I'm the engineer on the new In Flames record. Bjorn talks about writing, you know. He's writing a story. He writes a record. And obviously Howard and I have done many different records where we are going for the hit. But within Flames, it's really, he's written, a, he's written a record. So he has this piece of art that he's written. He wants to present it a certain way on how he feels. So I really have to come in here and just not get in his way, but feel him for where he is and make sure that he's comfortable and almost let him dictate it. I'm just really here guiding the ship very lightly, you know? He's that kind of guitar player. Oh, Bjorn's here. Hey, Bjorn. Yeah. Hey, guys. We're here. How's it going? Good. Yeah, I figured you guys were yeah. busy. How was everyone oh. today? Good. We're good. I can just do that part first. The role that the guitars player in the metal mix is probably the most important thing for like the band. The way they're EQ'd and gain we use them on them, the way they're spread in the mix. It's tricky because they take up so much space. So when you think about it, if you remove the guitars from the mix and just mute them, all of a sudden you hear all the space that's really in that mix between the snare drums and the kick drums and all the, the bass and all that. You put the guitars in and it literally takes up everything from like 500 hertz all the way up to about 10K. So the trick is how do I make it all work? We'll double up to there. I was thinking one guitar in each doing two different things. Oh, okay. So we do the same with the quad, triple quads. Mm -hmm. As you guys can see, I have this nice amp rack built here by our good friend Jeff Sheehan from Bay 7 Studios, came in and designed this rack for us here. Basically, all the heads are here, so the guitar basically comes into here. So there's a cable over there, and out of this splitter, one goes to a DI, one goes to the tuner, which I have in the rack there, and then I could basically come two out if I want to go into two different heads. I usually don't do that because I find phasing. A lot of engineers like to use multiple heads and are really good at getting sounds with multiple heads. I find that when I do it, I just can't get the phasing right. I'd rather just go with one amp. All the cabinets here have a speaker tie line going into there, which they're all numbered. And so they're all wired to all my cabinets that are out in the main room right now. So it's very easy to change between different speaker cabinets and diff different heads just by the numbers. So basically if I, you know, number 11, I could just grab the number 11 here, pull out the 14 and, you know, the Marshall JMP will go into a wizard slant cap. But for Bjorn, we're running the Wizard 50 watt, and it is running through, it's like an early 70s Marshall cabinet with vintage 30 watt black backs. Hey there, I'm Bjorn from Infames, I play guitar. Working with Howard and the mic, especially for me, is the best experience I've had so far recording. This is our 14th record, so I've tried a lot of different ways and approaches to making a record. And, and this is the third record with this team. Um, that shows that we really like what we're hearing and, and how the process goes. But I think you have to experience it and see the, the whole workflow and how quickly you get results back. Well, we just love it. It works really well for us. Uh, let's just take it piece by piece. Felt pretty good. Yeah. I solo everything back, so I listen to it in solo mode. So I could hear right away, oh, there's like little mistakes or the sound is a little bit dirty. And when you're working with somebody like Bjorn, who's a great guitar player, he's gonna dictate. Like I know, like I could tell by his vibe if he's not digging it. 
Yeah, let's try double. I like it. I don't like the, the first part, like laying down the first guitar, because it's so lonely and there's, there's no bottom in it. There's no edge to it. So as soon as you put that second guitar in, it starts sounding really good. And the same thing when you do the triples and quads, you just want to have something extra. For you. you play better. I play better. It's okay. Yeah, it's good. Let's do it again. It's a little scratches in there. better, I think. Close. Close. One more. Practice it. I like to mic on this one, the bottom speakers, and the reason for that is I find this cabinet has better low end when I'm micing the bottom speakers than when I'm micing the top speakers. On this cabinet, I'm pretty simple. I just use a 57, SM57, sure microphone, and a Sennheiser 421, which is, you know, pretty standard. I mic right on the center of the cone. For me, that's what I prefer. I pretty much keep it the same all the time, but basically I use a flashlight, line them up to point directly at the middle of the cone because the Wizard is very modern sounding. This, this Marshall cabinet, the vintageness kind of gives it a little bit more warmth. They're a really nice match pair. Huh. Yeah, that's good. Now let's double that. Just the ending. Yep. Yeah, I like that. And then it's back to the intro. Well, not the intro, the, the verse, that, that part, yeah. And the next is chorus. I like that. The cool thing with working with Mike, especially with Mike, because we're the guys that work together all the time, is that it's so efficient, it's so fast, and it just takes me, like today was two and a half, three hours to do four guitars and bass, and that's crazy. Think about it. Normally it's like, that's a good two, three days, normally, you know, in a studio. So that's, that's what keeps the energy up and the inspiration up. So I can go back to the house now and continue writing. The whole process is for us an ongoing thing, all the way up until we have to leave the country. You know, that we write all the way. For us, it's important to have that energy up. You know, that's, that's why we're here. That's, that's better. That's good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's good. 
the first pass, and like Bjorn said, is always the loneliest pass to get the first guitar rhythm down. And once we get that down, then I'll double it with the same amp. And I just want the guitars to be tight. If the take is not in this window, I go that Paul can't edit that. It's just, it's gonna be too difficult. So I know the window I need to be in with the way the guitars need to sound together as a double. And then obviously as a triple and a quadruple. And then I know Paul's editing is gonna take it to where it makes a modern sounding record of, of 2022. So I know what Paul's gonna accept and I know what Paul's gonna call me back and go, Mike, this isn't good enough, I can't fix this. Oh, let's try it. Pretty good. That's good. One more time. Almost. I was really lucky when I started working at a top studio at a young age. So I started working with the top bands like right at the beginning. So, like I worked with ACDC and Aerosmith and Van Halen and like right off the top. So that's kind of where my entry level was. So I saw these top artists and then when I would go out and find bands for myself to produce and brought them into the studio, I noticed going like, huh, this is like, why am I struggling so much to get guitar tones? You know, I just realized, I go like, listen, I'm using almost the same thing and it's just the, the person and playing the guitar. Nah, let's do it again. I got, I got to tune these from better. I was working on the balance record with Bruce Fairbairn and Ed walked out of the room and Bruce said we needed to punch in one guitar chord. But it was a small section in the song that had already been recorded. And back then we're on analog tape, there's no Pro Tools. So we had to match the sounds to get all the tones documented. So I said, yeah, I go, well, he's using this amp and it wasn't anything, you know, it's just an amp, a small Music Man cable and his Music Man guitar through a Marshall amp. Bruce plugs in the guitar and the guitar tone is, it's night and day. It's like not even the same thing and Bruce is looks at me and goes, that's not a good guitar tone. I go, yeah, it is. And he goes, no, it's not. And he's kind of getting mad at me because I'm saying, but it is. That's what we use. And Ed walks into the studio and goes, no, no, that's what I use. And then he hits the chord and it's perfect. And I'm going, yeah, see, it's, a ha it's all in the hands. And then people go, well, how do you get, how do you get Ed's tone? How does he, it's his hands. It has nothing to do. It's just a Marshall. Yeah, it's a modded Marshall, but it's the way he plays it. And just it all, the minute he picks up the guitar, it sounds like Van Halen. That one was good. That's good. Yeah. I, I'm very careful when I walk in because some people want to be manufactured and some people don't. So I got to let the artist dictate which way they're going to go, you know. Like when I'm man manufacturing, then it's, it becomes me. I just kind of do my thing and they, they go, oh, okay, I like it, good, let's go. But to really get what the artist is and to just to stay in his lane is challenging, but it's a lot of fun because I got to make him happy. That's his, he knows his sound. He knows what he wants. They've established themselves already. That's what's going on with In Flames. I just come in here and capture Bjorn. He really knows what he wants. His riffs are all written. He takes time to write out all the riffs, even his solos. Some bands will come here and just give me like a bunch of tracks. We'll comp something together. He'll go home, learn his solo note for note, exactly how he wants to play. All the harmonies, everything is laid out. So when he comes in here, it's just about executing his program that he's already made. Uh, oh, it's another ending. Just the ending. Mm -hmm. That's it. Can I hear the last chord? Just an E, I think. Yeah. Okay. Double. 
The editing really, we have a great editor with Paul, but it's not Paul's job to make things feel good. If they don't have energy and they don't feel immediate, they don't feel like they're shot out of a gun, there's nothing Paul can do. Our job is to make sure anything that gets delivered for editing, be it vocals, be it guitars, drums, it may be sloppy, it may be chaotic, it may be pitchy, it could be out of time. We don't really care. That can all be fixed. That's not the issue here. The issue is to make sure the feeling is there. We're not selling perfection. And Paul is great because he doesn't edit that much. Again, uh, it's just actually just the last, last thing. Uh, just a little bit more back. Yeah, there somewhere. I, I don't really say much. He just does his thing. I'm just here really to capture his performance and that's it and go home. It's really an easy job for me. There's other guitar players that come in here that they want to be guided. They want to be told what guitar tone to use, what guitar to use. Like they come in here excited. They don't want to know. They don't want to have their tone. They want to they want to go, oh, let's come in here and let's play with with all these amps that I have on the wall. And what do you think? You know, what can we plug in and how should I play this? And what do you think we should go here for a tone? That's awesome. Sounds good. Yeah, really good. And now it's back to verse. Okay, and then back to bridge A. And then it's the beginning again, yeah. Back to the intro. And then we just let it ring. Yeah, so. Uh, actually, you got to go a little bit further back. Yeah, right here. Because I was dee 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 dee. I get it right there. We'll do the chugging part first. Okay, cool. Next one. How's the transition on the other one? Yeah, that works. I like cool. that. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, man. Like really sounds really good. good. Is it triple quads now? Or you want to do something? Yeah, triple quads. Triple quads. 